What have we already learned? Today is a great day to review all the vocabulary words. I've attached a list of the words and their meanings, and I have attached a fun math lesson to incorporate math and vocabulary. Have fun with that activity. Vocabulary. There are three vocabulary words for this lesson. The first vocabulary word is equally. Equally is an adverb. In the same way or with the same amount. The second word is justice. Justice is a noun. Fairness, especially in the way people are treated. Boys and girls, remember a noun can be an idea. And that's what this is. Justice is an idea. Liberty is a noun, and it is an idea, too. A person, place, thing, or idea. Liberty is a noun. Freedom or the right to choose without being forced. Declaration of Independence. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Where have you heard those words before? Listen again and see if you remember who wrote these words. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson wrote them as part of our Declaration of Independence. Remember how the founders felt that they were being, being treated unfairly by the British. They did not feel that they were being treated equally or the same as the British on the other side of the ocean. The colonists wanted liberty or freedom from the rules of the British. And so when Jefferson sat down to write these famous words, he wanted to make sure that they knew the American nation would treat its people fairly. Constitutional Congress. Again, when the founders met to write our Constitution of the United States, they wrote about liberty and justice. When we hold our hands over our hearts and pledge allegiance to our country today, our final words are, with liberty and justice for all. These are important words written by our founders, but not all people were treated fairly in the American colonies. Let's look back at the 1700s, during and after the war, when the founders were busy writing these important words. Whom did they mean by we? when they wrote in the Constitution, we, the people of the United States. Some people say they must have been thinking about themselves. A group of men who made the laws of the land. Were they forgetting that the other people on the continent, the Native Americans who had lived there the longest women, or the African Americans who were slaves at that time? These were very smart men writing words that they knew would be read and reread by others for many, many years to come. They were writing for the future. Nevertheless, it is true that not everyone in colonial times was treated equally, and even today people are still seeking liberty and justice for all. Deborah Sampson during the Revolutionary War, women had different roles than they have today. Although today many women serve in our military and help protect us by fighting in wars, this wasn't the case during the Revolutionary War. Some women wanted to be soldiers, but they were not allowed to join the army. We know that some women actually disguised themselves by dressing like men so they could fight alongside them. One of the most famous of these women was Deborah Sampson, who fought in the war under the name of Robert Shirtliff. Women also were not allowed to vote, and in fact, all women did not receive the right to vote in America for, ne for nearly 150 years after the Constitution was written. Was that liberty and justice for all? 
Boys and girls, the picture you are looking at is a picture of a cotton field. There were many people from Africa who were brought to America as slaves for the colonists. When the colonists decided to fight for their freedom from Great Britain, they themselves were keeping freedom from a large number of African slaves because the slaves did not have the freedom to choose how to live their lives. Slavery was especially common in the southern colonies in the south, where huge plantations had large amounts of land to farm, and colonists depended upon the work of the slaves. In the New England and Middle States, slavery started to disappear after the Revolutionary War, but it continued for a long time in the South, where these large farms were located. Slaves who were not allowed to vote. Was that liberty and justice for all? Native Americans in Colonial Times for a long time, Native Americans lived on the North American continent alone. Yet, life for them began changing when the first European explorers arrived hundreds of years before the Revolutionary War. You will remember that some of them cho chose to help the colonists and trade with them when they first arrived. However, it was long before the colonists started exploring lands to the west pushing Native Americans off their land. Native Americans also were not allowed to vote. Was that liberty and justice for all? Saying the Pledge of Allegiance. So what do you think? Was the decision of our nation's founders to fight a six-year war for independence a wise decision? It probably was. The government they say set up 200 years ago has served as a model for the rest of the world ever sent, since. It was certainly not fair to all the people in the early years, and there are still many ways in which it can be improved. But it is up to us, we, the people, to make each day a better day for all of us. After all, liberty and justice have a lot to do with how we treat one another every day. Boys and girls, I hope you are enjoying these history lessons. Have a good day. In my class, we say kindness, 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 not one drop of meanness. Go be kind and be fair.